Hi friends, welcome to the second part of our video series on data sufficiency by betaguru.com. In the first part, we discussed that you don't actually have to solve the problem on data sufficiency. You merely have to determine whether the problem is solvable. So similarly, let's take a look at a couple of more examples. Okay, so just take a look at your screen friends. There's a question which says on which date of the month was Rahul born in October 1987. Okay, so I have to get enough information to determine the exact date. The first statement says that Rahul was born on an event date. Okay, now this alone is not sufficient because half the month is an event date. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So there are 15 or 16 event dates. Let me take a look at the second one. His date of birth was a prime number. This alone also is not sufficient to answer this because there are so many prime numbers which can also be dates such as 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and so on. But if you see friends, I combine these two statements and I know that Rahul was born on an even date and his date of birth was a prime number. Now there is only one even prime number that is 2. All the other prime numbers are odd. Okay, prime number is that which can be divided only by itself and by 1. It doesn't have any other factors. So 2 is the only prime number because every other even number is divisible by 2. So using both these statements together, I can answer this question. Okay, and the date of birth will come out to be 2nd October. Again, I need not answer the question, but I have to say whether it can be solved or not. So I will go ahead and I am going to select option E that both 1 and 2 are sufficient together. Again, take a look at your screen friends. We will see one more example. So the question is how is Alicia related to Suman? And it is followed by two statements. The first statement says Alicia's husband is the only son of Suman's mother. Okay, now let me quickly plot this. Okay, Alicia's husband Alicia's husband, okay, so these are a pair, is the only son of Suman's mother. Alicia's husband is the only son, so the mother comes here, of Suman's mother. So, Suman's mother and Alicia's husband's mother are the same. So, Suman and uh, Alicia's husband are siblings, okay. And uh, since Alicia's husband is the only son, only son of Suman's mother, so Suman has to be the daughter. Okay, so these two are brother sister. Alicia's husband and Suman are brother and sister. So Alicia is Suman's sister in law. So I can answer this using statement one alone. Also, let me see the second statement. Alicia's brother and Suman's husband are cousins. Okay, so I have Alicia and this Alicia has a brother. So brother of Alicia and Suman's husband are cousins. Okay, so this is uh, Suman and Suman has a husband. Now this person, Alicia's brother and Suman's husband, these two are cousins. Okay, these two are cousins. So basically Alicia is the sister of Suman's husband. Alicia is the sister of Suman's husband. Again sister-in-law. Or I have, I don't actually have to answer it, but I have enough information in both the clues to arrive at an answer. Okay. So I can say that either of these statements alone is sufficient to answer the question and I will select option C. Okay. So this is how we solve data sufficiency problems friends. Just keep in mind, you have to determine whether the problem can be solved or not. You don't actually have to go ahead and solve the problem. Okay. So, uh, see whichever statement is sufficient and accordingly go ahead with your answer choices. So, I hope this video was helpful for you and I will see you in another video on our series. Thank you.